terrible thing to live in fear. So it was around 1999, early 2000. Um, I was a freshman in high school when I started to get really passionate about collecting and archiving live footage of bands. This was well before YouTube was a thing. And so kind of back then, people were relegated to collecting VHS tapes that had live footage on them and sort of, you know, collecting these tapes and trading these tapes with people who had, you know, um, footage of bands that you didn't have. And so I did this for a few years. And after a while, I kind of got tired of this idea of using this live footage of bands as a sort of collateral. I felt like these things were part of a community and they, that they should be accessible to everyone within that community. Um, in some respect, you know, it's, it's a part of our history. And, you know, when I started to think, of it, think about things that way, I realized that this is, these are things that people should be sharing and it shouldn't be kind of um, kept to a very small minority of people. And so that's why I started 856. Um, hey 56 officially started in 2008. It was a way for me to kind of break away from this trading circuit of, you know, trading shows within a, with a, within a very elite and um, tight-knit community and sort of forging my own path and forging my own sort of online community. So I started the site in 2008 as a way for me to document kind of the music and the bands in my scene and a, as a way for me to share um, those moments and those memories with people who wanted to experience them. So I honestly don't remember the first show that I went to. Um, it was around 2001 when I started to really get involved with filming you know, bands in my community in, in South Jersey. Um, it was around that time that my friends were starting bands and I wanted to be involved, but I found no clear way to get involved and I really didn't want to be in a band. So that's why I picked up the video camera and started kind of documenting the things around me. Um, I was going to a lot of ska, pop, pop, pop punk shows, um, and through those shows I started getting introduced to hardcore. I think probably the first hardcore show I went to was maybe 2004, 2005. Uh, I don't remember what it was, honestly. Um, I want to say the very first show that I filmed was maybe December 22nd, 2001, at a uh, VFW hall in South Jersey. Um, one of the bands that played was The Progress, um, which is pretty well known for people in South Jersey, at least who are into kind of the indie rock, pop punk kind of thing. Um, but a lot of people know Evan, who is now, uh, who's now doing Into It, Over It, Into It and Over It. Um, the Progress was his, one of his first bands, I believe. So I have some very early footage of The Progress, which might have been my very first show that I ever filmed. As of today, I believe I have around 1,326 live shows on Hate 56, and maybe about two and a half million views total across all the videos. Um, I would say at least 1,300 of those sets are ones that I've filmed personally, um, and a handful of them are ones that I've kind of archived, um, that people have sent me tapes for that I've digitized and shared. You'll, there's, there are a handful of videos on the site um, primarily bands like 108 and Damnation AD, where I kindly asked a friend to film so I could, uh, so I could actually enjoy a set for once. Um, it's, cool to, it's cool to see that people are, are really into these videos. And um, you know, honestly, two and a half million views in the grand scheme of things isn't a lot. I mean, if you think about it, there are videos of dogs on YouTube taking a shit that have 50 million views, if not more. So at the end of the day, it's not that many views, but ultimately um, I'm shocked at the number of people who watch these videos. I think on an average day, I get about you know, between two to 6,000 plays across all the videos from people in over 140 countries. So to know that people are really um, into watching these videos kind of validates all of the time that I put into this. I think the most watched videos on Hate 56 as of right now are probably Code Orange from This Is Hardcore 2014, followed by Turnstile from This Is Hardcore 2013, followed by Title Fight from This Is Hardcore 2012, followed by Nails from, I don't remember, it's definitely a This Is Hardcore, but I don't remember the year, 
Um, I think this is definitely indicative of the fact that This Is Hardcore has become sort of a well-known um, annual fest that people turn to and people travel to every year to kind of see the best of the best. And I think the videos sort of reflect that as well. I think people really enjoy watching the videos from This Is Hardcore given the amount of production that I put into them with the help of um, my friends who do the second and third angles and my friends who help mix and master the soundboard feed as well. So I think definitely the site has grown with the fest. And so in that regard, I'm not really surprised that those bands and that those numbers are at the top of the Hate Five Six statistics. Um, and in addition to that, I mean, these are bands that, you know, 10 years from now, people are going to look back and when they kind of think about bands of this era, they're going to mention Code Orange, they're going to mention Turnstile and Nails and Title Fight, for better or for worse. I mean, I love all of those bands and I think they've all earned their keep and kind of earned the attention that they've gotten. So um, I think it's certainly reflective of, you know, the sites, the, the statistics on the site are certainly reflective of what is popular right now in terms of hardcore in this era. So it was around spring of 2009 after I had finished filming Burning Fight in Chicago. Um, Burning Fight was the first big fest that I ever filmed and I noticed that there was a big increase in viewership in my videos afterwards. So uh, when I came home from that and when I finished putting up all those videos, I was definitely reinvigorated with this kind of uh, desire to film, film shows. And so I really wanted to get involved with This Is Hardcore. I had gone to the, um, the fest the previous year in 2008, and I didn't film it that year. Um, I didn't even bring a camera with me, but I was like in the audience the entire time watching the video crew filming, and I spent more time analyzing how they were filming it and picturing, picturing myself in their shoes and wondering what it would be like to kind of document this amazing fest. And so in the spring of 2009, um, I emailed Joe Hardcore and I said, look, um, I really love filming shows and I really want get to invo get involved with This Is Hardcore. And I straight up asked him if there was a way for me to kind of get involved and, and film. And he responded, and actually no, actually he called me. Um, and uh, very few people, I think very few people have talked to Joe, but he's kind of a scary guy at first. And so when I saw it was his number, I kind of panicked. I thought it was gonna be that scene from um, Ghost Dad with starring Bill Cosby where he reaches through the phone and chokes the guy on the other end and I thought Joe was gonna you know I thought I had so, said something egregious and I thought he was gonna fucking choke me on the other end um, but he didn't he actually was really excited that I emailed him and he said I want you to film it and so he really took a risk on me and invited me to come shoot the fest and so I did you know that was the first time I spent what was it like three days straight filming bands I don't even remember how many there were. There were maybe around between 40 and 50 at that year, 2009. Um, and so I, I managed to survive and the videos were getting a ton of traffic. People were going fucking ape shit over them and loving them. Um, and that's when Joe began to realize that there was value in having his fest documented um, in a particular way. He realized that having um, coverage of his fest on, on Hate 56 gave gave the fest 24/7 365 days um, coverage of the fest that allowed anyone in the world to relive any moment of the fest any band that played the fest um, and in a sense it just allowed for continuous promotion you know he got back to me you know as the feedback was coming in and said he said you're doing such an amazing job with this that I want you to come back the next year um, and each year I definitely, the quality of the videos increased. I definitely, um, whether it was upgrading my camera equipment or audio equipment or changing the way I compressed the videos so they looked better visually, um, there was definitely an increase in the quality of the videos which translated to better um, statistics on the video. So if you look at the numbers for the This Is Hardcore videos from 2009 to the present, um, people are watching them at a much higher rate. I think it was around 2010 when Joe, you know, I started to become really good friends with Joe after having worked with him for a couple of years. And so um, it was through our friendship that he really asked me to become a member of the staff on This Is Hardcore. So I think it's been so since around 2010 um, or 2011, I've been a staff member of the fest and 
That means I do everything from putting together stupid promotional videos. So anything, any stupid video that you've seen from the fest regarding announcements or making fun of people, it's stuff that I've filmed and helped write with Joe and, and, and friends. Um, so I've definitely taken on the role of sort of um, being in charge of all the propaganda, the video propaganda. Um, and it's been great to kind of have a more of a direct hand in how the fest is run. So I talk to Joe pretty frequently, a couple nights a week, maybe. We talk everything about the fest, how we should be doing things differently, how everything from, you know, how many bands should we have, who should we get, how should we schedule it, um, things of that nature. So it's been great to really become a friend of Joe and sort of help him run this fest, which I think is, um, in my experience, probably one of the most important fests that are that's currently running um, worldwide that showcases you know the current state of hardcore. One of my favorite moments in the entire Hate Five Six archive. It's actually two moments that represent sort of one moment. It's of a band called All Else Failed from Philadelphia. The first time I filmed them was This Is Hardcore 2011. And my friend Kevin, who's a big All Else Failed fan, he told me, um, he's like, look, when you're filming the set, you really need to pay attention. Um, it's going to be crazy. There's going to be a lot of stuff happening. Just make sure you're kind of in the moment. Because um, it, it's easy to kind of zone out when you're filming a band. And so I wanted to really be present and sort of aware of what I was filming. So All Else Failed is really known for the song called Route One that has kind of a very chaotic beginning that then tapers off into a um, sort of like a bass line with a movie sample that then, and it then builds up into more chaos again. Um, so when I was filming them at This Is Hardcore 2011 and this part came on, I sort of instincti instinctively panned the camera over and I sort of had this tight frame and was panning across the crowd and it was a really it really took me took me aback because the song it's just so volatile with people in the crowd beating beating themselves beating each other people crying people stage diving um, the bands thrashing around and then it gets to this really slow part this really soft part and so it was an amazing juxtaposition to kind of see people's reaction as I was panning the crowd. You know, people's reactions ran the gamut of kind of sadness to relief to confusion, people in pain, people grimacing and like holding shoulders and their head. Um, but there was one moment where my friend Liam comes into frame and he hugs my friend Kevin from behind. And you know, both, both Liam and Kevin are big All Else Failed fans and they're also um, part of this is the, the This Is Hardcore staff. But there, there was a moment where Liam embraces Kevin and there was something about it that really stuck with me that here is a band and here's a song that is really cathartic for a lot of people. It's really violent, but it's also a release for a lot of people and it's, it's enabling people to kind of um, exercise whatever demons are plaguing them. When Liam embraced Kevin, that kind of encapsulated everything that, there, that, I, that was about that song for me. So fast forward to This Is Hardcore 2014 during All Else Failed set. Um, this is one of the few sets, actually this was the only set from this year that I didn't film personally. Um, I gave the camera to someone else and asked them to film. You can actually see me in the crowd trying to stage dive, me acting like an asshole. But I instructed my friend, I said, when you're filming Route 1, I want you to do a tight pan of the crowd. I want you to zoom in on the crowd and do this tight pan that I had done in 2011. I kind of wanted him to replicate it. I thought it would be a cool um, throwback, for lack of a better term, to the video um, from 2011. And so he did, and the coolest part about it is that as he's panning, you can see Liam again in the crowd. This time he's high-fiving someone, and then he embraces his friend. I don't know who the person was, but for me, to kind of have that exact moment of emotion captured in both videos by two different people um, really has stuck with me as probably, as it's, it's definitely my, my most cherished moment 
or I should say two moments in the entire 856 archive. So a lot of the feedback I get from people regarding 856, um, it's all across the board. Some people think that I'm running a company, that they think that I have multiple employees that I can then dispatch to all, all corners of the globe to film a show, but people don't realize that it's, it's just me and that I'm the one doing the traveling, I'm the one doing the filming and the editing and the uploading and all the show's social media stuff. In an ideal world, I would film every show, but I can't. I get a lot of feedback from people telling me to hurry up to post a video, which is very misguided as well. I think people don't really realize the amount of time and effort that goes into running this website. I'm very thorough and meticulous about how I do things. I want, I want to do the bands justice. I want to put out the best quality videos that I can, um, which is why I spend a lot of time cataloging the videos, archiving them, color correcting them, tweaking them. Um, before sharing them because I want people to get the best out of them and I don't want to half-ass any of it. People also tell me that they've waited long enough for a video that I have that I haven't posted yet and so I take I mean I think that's just a bullshit thing to say because there are very few people who film as often as I do and who are putting out kind of new content as, as often as I am and at the end of the day if I have a video in my possession, it's going to see the light of day. And so, I mean, people who tell me that they've waited long enough have a really skewed sense of kind of reality. And they're, it really shows what their entitlement is. I mean, not to sound like a dick, but I really don't owe anyone anything. Um, this is just a labor of love. I'm not getting paid from this stuff. All the, all the money that I get from donations are going into paying for the site costs, paying for the hard drives that I need and things like that. Um, so I think people who are telling me that they've waited long enough to, they, need, they really need to kind of take a step back and think about the bigger picture. Think about how many videos ex exist that have never seen the light of day. I mean, you know, I've got my hands on the Hellfest footage from 2004 and 2001. That stuff has been in an attic for over 10 years and I'm slowly getting to it. So I think people really need to keep that perspective in mind that, yeah, even though it's going to take me some time to get through all of that video stuff, it's going to surface. Um, and it's not going to take 10 years. So I'm telling you, please be patient and everything that I have will see the light of day. You know, all that negativity aside, I do get a lot of feedback from people saying that, you know, thank you for filming this band in, this, in that basement in Boston or Philadelphia. Um, they'll, they'll never tour this part of the world. And so I think a lot of people find value in Hate 56. And so when I get feedback like that, it really validates the time and the effort that I put into it. And it definitely eclipses all the negative comments that I get. So to know that people are, are connecting with the videos and really engaging with them and are discovering new bands and reliving their favorite moments or reliving shows that they couldn't experience because of whatever reason, I mean, that is what keeps this website alive and that's what keeps me motivated to keep on doing it. Sometimes I feel like I've done everything that I can, um, but at the same time I feel like I want to keep pushing the boundaries. So in recent years I've been collecting um, footage that I, didn't, I haven't shot personally that people are sending me, whether it's stuff that they filmed over the years or they acquired through trading. The stuff like the Hellfest 2001 footage, the two, that Hellfest 2004 footage, and assorted kind of VHS tapes that I've been collecting. Those are things that I'm starting to digitize and um, clean up and upload for people to enjoy. So I definitely think that the future of Hate 5 6 is, it's one of kind of extending it from a portfolio of things that I've shot to kind of national archive or massive library of just hardcore shows in general. So I think what I want to do in the coming years is to really um, streamline the process of collecting tapes from people, digitizing them, researching them, researching the tapes to figure out, you know, who played, when was the show, where was the show, possibly, you know, ideally who filmed it so they can be credited, um, and then archiving them on the site so people in the future can kind of come to hate56.com and really find videos that span the entire kind of history of hardcore, things that are beyond my involvement from the mid 2000s to now. So, you know, I think I'm, I really want to keep, you know, pushing the envelope that way and just keep finding new ways of archiving shows and being, you know, 
being a conduit for people to inter interact with hardcore in this kind of medium.